What is real? How do you define real? You can't jump into cash. Cash is trash. What do you do? You get out. Good evening. Hello, how are you? I'm great. How are you, Alex? Well, uh, where are you based? Uh, we're in Chicago. We're shooting out of Chicago. How about yourself? Are you in North Carolina? Yeah, I'm in North Carolina at the moment. Awesome. Um, yeah, well, uh, I love Chicago, though. Oh, cool. Well, welcome to the show, um, Alex Alex Edelman, CEO and co-founder of Lolly.com. Um, you know, Lolly's you know pretty obvious to I think to myself and I think to a lot of Bitcoiners. Um, you know, it helps you shop at retailers, save money, and and get rewarded in Bitcoin. Um, but you know, I'm really curious about what it, what what the journey's been like building Lolly, what brought you to the space, and, and really the reaction from from pre coiners or or no coiners or just users that are are just interested in the rewards. Uh, and and there's obviously a lot more to dig into um, with your you know with what you've built before and and kind of your take on certain things. But just tell us a little bit about Lolly and and why you built it. Yeah, and first off, uh, thanks for having me. Sure. Um, yeah, good to be here. So, um, so yeah, so uh, my name's Alex. I'm one of the founders of Lolly and uh, the CEO of Lolly. Um, we started, uh, my team and I had started a company previously called Cosmic, and we created this uh, e-commerce gateway that let merchants sell their products anywhere. Uh, so um, really this belief that like everybody should be able to buy and sell anywhere, uh, merchants can sell anywhere, uh, users can buy anywhere. Um, and this idea, you know, holds true um, with with sort of the intersection of like the frustration, I think, of global payments. If anyone has sure. you know, been in the payment space, it's extremely frustrating to move money around the world. Um, uh, me being like, a, you know, a kid of the Internet, uh, building things since I was like 12, uh, working with, you know, engineers in Ukraine and Bangladesh and India. It's 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 so cumbersome and such a hassle to move money around. What, what and were you, so we got, yeah. What were you building at 12? Uh, video games. Video games. Uh, that's where I, yeah. That's where I got my start. Sure. Um, yeah. that reminds me of my son. He, he's turning eight and he, he loves to build video games. Uh, he uses things like Mario up. maker. Oh, cool. I'll have yeah. to check that out. And, and Nintendo Labu. And, and he dreams of being that's a video awesome. game maker amongst other things. What, what would you give uh, as advice to your, you know, eight-year-old self or your 10-year-old self? Keep it up. Um, game making teaches you like logic. It teaches you product. It teaches you psychology, um, economics. Uh, you have to build like, you know, in-game economies. Uh, so you, you get a really good understanding of like uh, of psychology, of what makes people click, um, what makes people like continue to stay involved. Uh, and, and you learn storytelling. It has uh, video games are this very interesting um you know, industry in that you, it's, it's equal parts creative, um, and logic based, which are two very different ends of the, um, uh, different parts of the brain. So it attracts very different people. Um, and one thing I found in life is just anytime you can attract people from like, you know, different worlds, different, um, you know, skill sets, uh, you're going to have some, uh, some good conversations and learn a lot. Sure. Uh, so I, I, I love the space. I would encourage your son to keep it up. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I really want to encourage him to focus on it uh, and, and excel at it while his interest is there. Um, I think that's important. W w how old were you when you started Cosmic? Um, so it was, it was shortly, it was actually uh, partly in college. I was around 21, 22 years old. And um, it, it came from studying microfinance, my, the Grameen Bank, a lot of these like microfinance initiatives. Um, and that coupled with a lot of my experience in, in building uh, software, um, I just always had this like frustration. I was like, why can't I move money around uh, freely? And so I didn't know about Bitcoin at the time, um, but I just kept uh, having this issue of like, I see something that I want, or as a seller, I, I, I can reach my, my customer, but they can't buy it. Right. And so there was all this friction between all these middlemen, all these like, all these taxes, uh, you know, that everybody wanted their cut. And at the end of the day, it's like, you know, I could, you know, if, if we were in person, I could just hand you cash. I could give you money. Um, why can't I do that over the Internet? So sort of like early on, just, you know, found out like there, there needed to be some sort of uh, innovation in money. Um, and, and so, yeah, I started building Cosmic and, and had a lot of success with that. What is Cosmic? Yeah. I, I don't fully understand it. Uh, I get that you're it's sort of uni universal shopping. Mm -hmm. um, 
and and I but so what is the um, the model there? You you can just shop yeah, so, anywhere at any retailer. So we were one of the inventors of uh, what, what later became called as the buy button. Um, it, it was a universal commerce gateway, uh, e-commerce gateway. But um, the technical application, or sorry, the simple application was we would basically connect uh, merchants with cons uh, with publishers to let consumers buy from anywhere. So it was a horribly complex business model. Uh, if I could do it again, I would have like dramatically simplified it. Uh, but it was good for like you know cutting my teeth and and um, learning how to sell, uh, learning how to build a very complex technology, and ultimately like discovering Bitcoin through all the uh, the hassle and and um, heartaches. Sure. So uh, how, how do you discover Bitcoin? And I, I believe you had a, an extremely successful exit with Cos. Cosmic, but then you pivot to Bitcoin and, and maybe how, how does that come about? Yeah, great question. So um, let's see where to start with that. Um, so yeah, so we, we ended up, I ended up about two years into building Cosmic, uh, learning about Bitcoin. I was at a bar and I bump into this guy and it was a mutual friend. Um, or we, had, we had a mutual friend and uh, he, had, he had just learned about Bitcoin and he was obsessed. And I, I think, you know, when you, when you catch that bug, uh, you just can't stop thinking about it. You can't stop talking about it. You want to tell the whole world about it. Um, it and, and, and so it clicked for him. And, you know, keep in mind, like when I hear about this, I'm going from like merchant meeting to merchant meeting. I was like sleeping on a couch in New York. And I, you know, I, I talked to probably about 500 to 1,000 merchants over the course of those two years uh, trying to sell Cosmic, you know, in, into this. Um, I had seen all of their pain points. And, you know, a huge pain point was like fraud and, and um, you know, ease of use and global commerce. I see all these merchants that were trying to figure out the Internet. How do you sell on the Internet? Right. Um, and, and so this was like, you know, well before Shopify and a lot of these, you know, commerce platforms had really emerged as, as leaders in the space. So uh, Stripe, this was before like Stripe really became, you know, prevalent to make it easy for, you know, payments. Uh, this is before, you know, a lot of the mainstream, you know, knew about Bitcoin. Um, and so, I, yeah, I learn about Bitcoin. I get obsessed with it. Uh, I want to know everything about it. I scour the, you know, the Internet to learn everything I can about it. Uh, and, you know, honestly, there weren't a lot of good resources. And so you just had to, like, you know, go use it. And right. and so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I was poor at the time. And so I, I bought one Bitcoin. I think it was like seven hundred dollars. Uh, it's all like all I could afford. And I just started playing around with it. I started moving money around. I started to, like, um, think a lot about it. Um, and so, yeah, you, you were going to ask a question. I was, sure. Yeah. No, no, I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, but I'm curious, what what did you think of the branding of, of Bitcoin then? And I use that word uh, tentatively because, you know, Bitcoin is not a brand. Uh, but, it, you know, it has branding and marketing like anything else, maybe more organic, emergent. Uh, but what was your thinking of the brand then? And, and maybe where has it moved to or has it changed at all, your impression of the brand? Yeah, um, the brand was... It was pretty much unknown by most. I think at that at that point, in uh, you know, I I mean, my my parents had never heard of it. My you know sister, my you know my friends from back home, like they they had hadn't heard of it. Um, it was it was basically like this like you know part of like the dark internet, dark web. Uh, it wasn't really like a you know common uh, household name as I think it's becoming today. Um, and that 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 you know problems arose. So while I got really, while it was very exciting um, to see the, the the core technology and how incredible it was, and I hadn't seen anything that had excited me since literally I found the, you know, I, I started like playing around with the internet. Right. Um, it was like it just blew my mind. I was like, all these merchants that I had been working with, all their pain points or many of their pain points could be solved with this currency. Right. So I actually, um, I uh, you know, part, oh, yeah. So what, what what are those pain points that? can be solved with Bitcoin as a currency. And I think it's interesting because you come to this, you know, space. Well, I mean, you come to you come to it from a payments technology standpoint. Um, so I don't say you come to the space. You just are in the space of payments. And a lot of people, that's kind of like a hot debate in Bitcoin. How much of it should be savings technology, payment rails, uh, things of that nature. And, and I think that you're you have a much more forward looking view on it because you're kind of taking that second and third order effect because eventually it will have payment rails. Um, so, I mean, what, what were some of the pain points that you were dealing with at Cosmic that you, you think that are a little different now with Bitcoin or that you're able to maybe solve with Bitcoin? 
Uh, margins. Um, trying to find margins in the payment world is incredibly difficult. You need in you need like unbelievable scale um, and volume to in order to build a real business there. And and so unless you're pulling from like marketing margins, um, it's very difficult to build a, a company in the payment space uh, today. It, it was very difficult then um, because what happens is you have you know ten different parties that already are you know trying to take 0.1% from the transaction you know you have your merchant acquiring bank you have your bank you have your payment processor you've got your credit card companies you've got um you know like geez, uh, uh, why uh, the, the, basically a lot of people are taking money right. from that um you know you have the you have like the the cart hook technology on the front end um there's just like a lot of middlemen um yeah. and so uh, when you're dealing with payments, you're trying to, you know, get a piece of that pie. But at the end of the day, the merchant doesn't want to keep giving, you know, one and a half, two percent, two and a half percent, three percent fees unless you're actually solving a real pain point for them. So the pain point we solved is, you know, we, we found a business and in actually increasing conversion by making it easier for people to actually buy something, buy their products. Right. What, what do you mean um, by that, conversion? Um, so when somebody goes to a site, uh, they could either convert it like 20% to actually buy the item, or they could convert it 40% to buy the item. So a merchant is going to see that as an incremental sale because they can convert somebody higher. So we made it easier for somebody to actually buy basically less clicks because you could buy right there versus going through like, you know, 10 to a hundred different clicks throughout their site to go buy something, you could buy right there. Right. So we basically just made it easier and took away the friction um, and, and solved it firsthand that merchants wanted that. Um, they wanted to pay for it. Now, you know, meanwhile, I'm going in like, I, I got really excited about Bitcoin, probably too excited. And I start to go to all of our merchant partners and I start to tell them, I was like singing Bitcoin's praises. I was like, this is the next big thing. You know, please listen to me. Um, and a lot of them were like really interested in the, in the technology um, but they were like, who's going to pay with it? It's extremely volatile. It is, you know, this is at a time when this is going and swinging, like, you know, hundreds of percentages every sure. day It's yeah. a crazy time. Right. So they didn't really, they weren't really interested because they were like, who wants to actually spend something that's going up in value? And I was like, you know, to be fair, that's, that's a really good point. Meanwhile, I had started to see this cult developing on the internet of people that were like fascinated with Bitcoin and moving it all around. And it was an international market. And I started to see freelancers start to want, you know, freelancers in, in like Ukraine and in India and Bangladesh, they started to want Bitcoin because they could go, they could receive money from anywhere in the world. You know, they didn't have to deal with like the payment processing fees that I had been familiar with, with the merchants. So I started to see all these wheels start, start moving of like how people were going to adopt this. The issue is like a lot of these merchants at the end of the day, not only was there not a ton of demand at the time on the consumer side to actually pay with it. Um, but also with remittance networks, they, they just didn't exist. And so you had to have entire entire treasury departments at these merchants that had to deal with, okay, if we're going to receive, you know, a hundred Bitcoin for this payment, what are we going to do with it? Right. Now we got to go worry about the volatility. Is it going to go up or down? And you don't, you, when you have a finance department, they don't want to worry with that, about that, especially when you're dealing with like a few transactions a year at the time that were actually moving through the, the market. So we started to see companies like BitPay emerge um, that I think, and you know, a lot of other companies emerge that were in the Bitcoin payment space. And, you know, that we were going head to head selling with them and they, they just weren't really weren't having any success um, in selling to those merchants. So, so we saw firsthand that like Bitcoin wasn't really going to take its like huge leap. It wasn't going to be what I think a lot of people saw where they thought it was going to be like billions of people were going to pay with Bitcoin. We saw very early on that that was not the case. Um, yeah, so, so that, that was our first foray in sort of dipping our toes in the water in an in a, in a enterprise, um, you know, capacity and seeing it, that just wasn't going to be where, where the masses were going to adopt it. But it, it sort of led us into this, uh, this future that where we're at today. Right. So w when did you pivot more towards rewards? Um, and I, I think this is a good time to get into how Lally works. Mm -hmm. And, and are you competing with, I guess on that front, you know, the, the referral business, like the coupon business, are you competing with, you know, just Bitcoiners ev evangelizing and, and getting people to use this sort of uh, feedback loop uh, or both? Um, 
So yeah, how how does Lolly work for the for the average user user? Yeah, um, yeah, great question. So um, a a bit about how we there's like a big gap there. Uh, how we actually got there. Um, we ended up building a, a, a pretty significant business um, with with uh, Cosmic. Uh, we ended up getting acquired by a company called Pop Sugar, which was our biggest customer at the time, uh, to come in and power 1.2 billion in retail revenue running through that platform. Wow. And then um, about a year later, uh, we, we ended up growing about 10x post acquisition. So we, we had a pretty successful acquisition there. And then uh, about a year later, uh, Rakuten, the biggest cash back company um, in the U.S. and many parts of the world, came along and bought us away from Pop Sugar. So uh, we ended up get that's where we really got our um, got familiar with the reward space. We had been powering a lot of these companies. We've been working with a lot of these companies, um, you know, but we hadn't really like uh, we we were like inside the belly of the beast, right? right? So we were learning everything there was to know about rewards. We had learned everything there was to know about like shopping and search and um, uh, from from Pop Sugar and Shop Style and and you know. Um, all, all the companies like Honey and yeah, what, what everyone the, there. What are some of the things you're learning about all those issues pre Bitcoin uh, rewards? The reward. I, I don't, you know, I, mm-hmm. I don't consider myself a shopper. Um, I, I think I'm more of a shopper than I think because I'm on Amazon. I, I just click away, uh, and I, I kind of just try to stick to the things I need. Uh, I don't hang out online to shop. Um, and Lolly is great for me because I, I can kind of, you know, if there's a large ticket item or something that I really you know, I'm going to spend some money on online. I can go directly to Lolly, then to the the retailer. Um, but I, I don't consider myself a shopper. I'm not, you know, looking for coupons uh, at all. You know, maybe I use them once in a while, but I'm I'm not a shopper like that. So, what are some of the things you learned about those marketplaces and that that kind of industry, the the rewards industry, the retailing industry, um, that you brought to this space? Yeah, uh, we learned a ton about just like shopper psychology. So, you know, you th- think about just the U.S. alone, um, you know, people are used to getting these cashback rewards. And while you might not be a shopper, um, well, I personally think everyone's a, everyone's a shopper. Right. Everyone's a spender. We live in a capitalist society. You know, the, the, uh, we live in a world where, you know, you can buy just about anything you want, the, you know, touch of a few right. buttons. So, you know, you travel, I'm sure, you know, before COVID at least, uh, probably, you know, traveled quite a bit. Um, so everybody is like spending money, yeah. uh, especially in the U.S. So um, one of the things I learned is like part of, like why people buy the things that they do and also how to get really good at saving people money because that's the game. It's like the, the best product is the one that saves people the most money. Mm-hmm. And so Rakuten is really, really good at it. And they've been doing it for 20 years. Um, I, I don't know. Rocket. What, what is that? So Rakuten, a lot of people know it as Ebates. Mm, um, Ebates is so Ebates is the biggest cashback company in the U.S. and uh, Rakuten bought them. Uh, have they merged their brands? So now now people know it as Rakuten. Uh, at the time when they bought us, it was Ebates. Um, but Rakuten had bought Ebates for a billion dollars as a uh, you know massive cashback company. Um, Rakuten then uh, has expanded their market share all across the world. Um, a lot of parts in like uh, South Southeast Asia, namely Japan. Um, have done very well with with the Rakuten business model. So we got to learn all about like cashback, rewards, coupons, um, basically like how most of the world shops. Um, and and so if you think about like the psychology of that shopper, you know they they're like a coupon clipper. They 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 see something they want and they want to, They think about how can I save on that? How can I save the most amount of money? And it kind of goes back to my earlier days of like building games. It's, you know, shopping for a lot of people is a game as an adult, right? You're looking at it as like, how can I save the most amount of money, you know, for my family, whether to like save for your college fund. And so it's very interesting when you think about saving as an investment and that's where it's sort of, we become, you know, we sort of bridge this gap from a saving, you know, savings as coupons to the greatest savings technology ever created, which is Bitcoin. And you brought it up earlier and that's, that's the whole game now. It's like, you asked me who my biggest competitor is. It's cash. It's cash back. It's how do we convince somebody that Bitcoin back is better than cash back because it's it's a it's this finite amount of money that the entire world can own and we've never seen anything like it in our lifetime. And how do we convey that in the simplest way to get somebody to start to use us over our like cash back coupon, you know, quote unquote competitors? Yeah. Uh, so, what has been the reaction from you know 
the people like the the grandmother in Ohio. Um, yeah, it's been good. Um, we have uh, we have this whole term. So one of our um, one of my colleagues, one of our employees, um, her grandma uses Lolly like very actively. She's one of like our our most active shoppers. And uh, her, her her name we call her we call her Bubby uh, is her grandma right. name. And and so we have this joke. It's like you know how do we design for Bubby? Bitcoin for Bubby is is what we say internally. So it's like we want it to be as simple as something that you can send to your mom, your grandma, your you know maybe your friends that you know have never touched Bitcoin before. So it has to be dead simple. It has to look like every other cashback coupon app. But you have to be somewhat curious, which I think a lot of people are. And you have to say, well, why, you know, I want Bitcoin, but it's too difficult. I don't want to spend seven days, you know, putting my bank account information in Coinbase. I want a very simple, lightweight solution that I can come in and, and start to earn Bitcoin before I actually buy it. Yeah. And, and that's really where our sweet spot is. It's at the top of the funnel where, you know, you are Bitcoin curious, you're crypto curious, and you want to get into it. And we, we, we make it really, really easy for right. people to get into Bitcoin. What has been the perception from people of, of, I think the notion of like maybe getting Bitcoin for free, uh, sometimes I think almost is a tough sell. Uh, I don't think, you know, when people get the rewards from other companies, they don't necessarily see it as free. Um, they, you know, they, they, they just understand cash, whether they, when I say understand cash, I'm not saying they understand what money is, but they, they know how to use their cash. They have confidence in cash. Um, so they get cash back. But with Bitcoin, you know, especially if I'm coming more from a conversation where maybe I'm trying to encourage someone to buy $10 a week or, or something along that lines. And then I could kind of say, you know what, why, why don't you just get some for free? And, and I should probably use the word earn, you know, earn, earn, yeah. earn back or get rewarded in. Um, so I just kind of curious, like, what do you think of that notion and, and how do you try to position uh, the value prop? Yeah. So you nailed it. It's, it's, it's about earning. It's about rewards. Uh, people really like understand that Bitcoin back also, you know, does very well. Um, it, you, you're totally right. It's like airdropping some, it, it's, it's kind of like that, uh, you know, the parable of like, you teach a man to fish kind of, you know, the, the, the parable around like someone has to do something to get something. Otherwise, if they just get it for free and they haven't put any work, they don't really feel like they've done anything and you haven't really taught them much. But if you do, if you, if you, like, I think the psychology of it is, you know, you're, with, with Lolly, it literally takes 30 seconds to get like up and rolling. I mean, I, as you've seen, and it takes, you know, all you got to do is buy once from the merchant you probably already shop with, we have a thousand merchants. Whereas like it could take seven days to earn, to get money from like a Coinbase because you have to like hook up your account and all that, all that stuff. So people are doing like a work, but we don't, you know, it's, it's, so it's free Bitcoin um, of, of, you know, taking something you would already have bought. Um, but you're doing the slightest amount of work that takes like 30 seconds, like download this extension. You feel like it's sort of like a hack where it's like, oh, it's this like secret that you've learned about. Um, and that's how Honey was. Like, you know, I, I've known those founders for a long time. And if you're not familiar with Honey, it's like, you know, the, the best coupon, you know, extension out there. And, you know, they exited for $4 billion. They built an incredible business off of coupons. And this is at a time when like, you know, like people probably thought like coupon apps, like, you know, what's, who, how many people use coupons? And and this brought coupons to you. So in a way that like, you know, the, the company that they replaced was like a Rakuten or a Retail Me Not, they brought coupons to you. They made it easier, 10 times easier to get coupons. We're doing something very similar, but we're bringing Bitcoin to you. We're making it 10 times easier to like remind yourself every day, like what's my balance? Like, you know, how what's the price of Bitcoin? Like all these sort of touch points are these rituals that you establish to remind our users like, about Bitcoin. Right. Well, what has been the reaction from retailers? And, and one of my questions, or kind of the angle is, a lot of retailers give a very wide range of, of Bitcoin reward. Um, I think it's anywhere from, say, half a percentage in Bitcoin back to 30, 40%. Uh, what kind of drives those decisions for retailers? And what kind of questions do they ask you ab about Bitcoin? Um, maybe irrelevant to the business model, but just kind of like, what are follow-up questions that they're asking? Yeah, that's, it, it's a great question. Um, you know, where it started is very different where it is today. So it's a, probably a two-part answer. Uh, first part is, um, you know, I was able to, I, I've made a lot of these merchants a lot of money over the last, uh, I guess, nine years 
um, from my last business and this business. So the first 500, to be honest, like did me a favor and they came on board because they were like, you know, they, they've known me. They know, they know I, I'm like, you know, I'm not uh, trying to scam them. Um, and and really, like they weren't that interested in Bitcoin, to be honest. They they saw it really to, to your point earlier as a marketing. Right. They're not involved in the from what I gather. And I could be wrong. They're not really uh, gaining Bitcoin or involved in that. Um, they're just no. They don't out. have to touch it, right? So that's, for them, it's a referral a business, uh, right. and that's why I'm curious. Just, like, you know, uh, you know, it's like, well, you know, because it's very clear that you're coming from Lolly, so they know exactly who's buying because of the Bitcoin reward. So I wonder, you know, as the business scales and grows, and and what kind of follow up questions they have that are outside of Bitcoin, because they're not involved in the Bitcoin equation right now. All they know is that Bitcoiners or people that want this reward are coming to them as a referral. Yeah. So that's where it started. And then it got really cool about like, you know, a year in when we're doing like our annual review with all of our merchants and, you know, they're, they're like, you know, I'm, I got emails way before then, but they kind of thought, oh, this, you know, we'll have a few sales trickle in. It'll be like a nice little business. And then they start seeing like a lot of money come in and they start to see like the buying power that Bitcoiners have. They start to see like, you know, Bitcoiners are very smart. They're very curious. They're willing to like shop outside of Amazon because they're, they want to find the best price. They're very savvy shoppers, I think, as a lot of these merchants call them. And so then I start to get all these emails and calls. And then and then they start to get really interested because they're marketers at the end of the day. Like they're looking to, you know, increase their sales and to beat Amazon. They're like, they're, that's what they're really doing. Right. And that's what we're doing. We're like you said it earlier. It is super easy to go shop at Amazon. But like you can actually make way more money and way more Bitcoin if you shop outside of Amazon when you use Lolly. Yeah. It I just mean, takes a few extra clicks. Yep. I, and it's not even that many extra clicks. I think it's just breaking no. the habit. But I really, I mean, that's kind of what Amazon competes with me for right now is Lolly. Because exactly. you know, with my Amazon card, I'm getting 5% back through Prime. So, mm -hmm. uh, which is immediate, immediately redeemable right at the site. Uh, so I don't have to worry about store value or any, anything like that with, with those cash back rewards. But, you know, anytime I'm buying, especially, and that I'm curious too, like, you know, you said retailers are noticing that customers are savvy and obviously they're getting a lot of data or I, I shouldn't say they're getting a lot of data. I, I'm not saying you're sharing a lot of data with them, but um, yeah, we don't. I, whatever data they're looking at or uh, whatever points of information there is, is kind of telling them some story uh, that Bitcoin is. is savvy or, and I'm so kind of curious, like. Because I, I would think that, or I can't say, I, for myself, I go to Lolly more for larger pur uh, purchases, um, you know, versus like maybe a $10 purchase to get 2 to 10% back. It's, it's not going to drive me outside of my, my normal habits right now. Um, so I'm kind of curious what the retailers are seeing that kind of makes them think these referred shoppers are, are more savvy than others. Yeah. So, I mean, they're, they're basically seeing that like our users are... Um, willing to use Lolly and, and be incentivized to shop at their, at these merchants, uh, instead of Amazon. And that's why, that's how you make money, right? Like right. there's, that's ultimately what every ad is. And at the end of the day on, on, on the internet, it's trying to get you to shop at, at the merchant site as opposed to their competitor sites. Um, and so we basically, you know, function very similarly in that, you know, consumers that are smart, know that they can shop anywhere on the internet. They're looking for the best price and they're looking for the merchants that like, you know, support them. And so you're basically claiming part of the margin of advertising because you're not, you're not capitalizing on advertising. The, you, the merchant doesn't have to spend, you know, 20, 30% to go acquire you. And so they're willing to spend, let's just say like five to 10% to acquire you through Lolly. So that's where the that's where you really start to take advantage. That's why, like why these like shoppers get really smart, and that's why they want to use cash back. That's why they want to use Bitcoin back um, because they start to get smart. And so what we started we started to have these conversations about a year in, where all these merchants were like, "Wait a second, what is this Bitcoin thing? Like I've heard about it, and I kind of thought it, and people were like, I just kind of did it because you know I had known you." And then they started to ask questions. And then I start sending them the Bitcoin standard. I start, we, you know, we start teaching them about what Bitcoin is and what the future of it is. Um, and now, now we have like a whole like cult of merchants that are like really pumped about it and that see how big this business can be. And they see how good that these customers can be. Um, and so now we're starting to see this tipping point that's getting really exciting where 
merchants are like getting excited about Bitcoin, whereas two years ago, you know, they were just looking at it as another marketing, you know, channel. Right. Um, how are your users interacting with Bitcoin? Uh, are they cashing out? Are they withdrawing to private wallets? So many of them keep it in their Lolly account. Um, you know, we like a lot of our users are not, um, you know, keep in mind, a lot of our users have never had Bitcoin before. Um, and then the users that have, you know, we have like a, a subset of like hardcore Bitcoiners that, you know, they want, they want their private keys. They, they want, you know, they want to hold their uh, money in, in their cold storage wallets or whatever. And so they're moving money off. Um, and, you know, we make it very easy for people to transfer money to their Bitcoin address to cash out if they, you know, if they've doubled or tripled their money, a lot of our users have said, "Hey, you know, I'm, I, I'd like to, you know, take my my earnings and rewards and and uh, get back in, in fiat." That's fine. The majority of them let it ride. They they want to like hold it. They look at it as an investment. And so that's where we kind of go back to this the the psychology of our users are looking at Bitcoin as a store of value today. But I think where it gets really exciting is in the future where they start to transition where, you know, let's just say like Bitcoin starts to stabilize, it starts to get to, you know, a, a less volatile currency and consumers, you know, start to accumulate quite a bit. You know, they're earning Bitcoin, they're buying Bitcoin through Lolly. They start to, you know, hold a significant amount in their wallet. I think it gets really interesting considering we're at the, you know, the intersection of having all these consumer wallets and all, I, you know, we have more merchant partnerships than anybody in the world. And so, that's when it gets really exciting right. because when the merchants start to see the advantage of accepting Bitcoin, when you have the remittance networks all built out and you can let somebody actually pay with Bitcoin that wants to pay with Bitcoin and you can save them an extra 1% because the merchants are then incentivized to actually accept that Bitcoin, right? right, right. Like, you know, they don't like paying 10% chargeback fees. They don't like paying 3% to the credit card companies. They don't like paying 1% to the, you know, the acquiring banks. So, you know, it gets really exciting at that point when they start to see Bitcoin as a cost advantage to accepting. So right. then you can start to see like an abstraction layer there where where like, you know, pay with Bitcoin and earn an extra 1% with Lolly. Right. Yeah. I mean, you guys are building out liquidity, uh, which is what merchants need um, to, to want to receive uh, that currency. So w where do you see Bitcoin going, you know, from a payment rails perspective? And, and how does maybe lightning play into this? And, and where to follow that up is where, where is Lolly going? Yeah. Lightning is incredible. And, and we, we all, I mean, our team uses it personally. We haven't integrated it, um, it very intentionally. Um, it just, it doesn't play a huge part because our users pay with cash. They pay with us dollars. Um, so it really doesn't affect us. It's really like, there's probably like, you know, there's a group of, of our, of our users that want to withdraw with lightning as opposed to Bitcoin core, but, it's a very small, you know, percentage of our users, and the majority of our users, and actually the real customer that we're we're really serving, is the customer that doesn't know Bitcoin. Right. And so, if you if you can think about teach like we already got to teach them Bitcoin has value, and then you got to teach them about Lightning. It's just like it's too much. Right. Um, it's a good way to scare people away right now. So we're we're hyper focused right now on just teaching people about Bitcoin that it has value. We're okay with them keeping their you know, their Bitcoin in the Lolly wallet today. And then over time, I think that there's going to be exciting things when, you know, when we get to that future where they're paying with Bitcoin, um, that's when I think lightning gets exciting. Right. And when, yeah, so like, what is your time frame around that? And, and how do you see that playing out? Is, is Lolly something that would conceivably be built on top of lightning at that point for Lolly to be a full complete payment rail? Uh, lightning and liquid are, are probably, you know, the, the, the two best, you know, projects right now that are advancing Bitcoin as a payments technology. Um, where I see Bitcoin payments really emerging is is kind of what, you know, what I had seen, you know, seven years ago, really, which was paying contractors, paying freelancers, paying uh, international workers um, on, uh, you know, on tasks. Uh, that being a huge, you know, huge component uh, that, that we're seeing, you know, uh, today. So basically like international payroll is probably going to be like, you know, a big component. Um, I see, uh, I see stable coins being a huge part of the future. Um, I, you know, I, I have my criticisms of many, many stable coins and we probably have a whole episode on that, but stable coins are inevitable. Uh, they will be prevalent whether we like it or not, you know, as, as Bitcoiners. Um, and it will be a huge, like, like, um, 
sort of uh, segue for the mainstream uh, adopters of cryptocurrency to move into Bitcoin because it, it, it's it's the gateway drug, right? It's like you have the stable coin and then you're like, wait a second, what is this backed by? It's just an algorithm. It's like, and then you then you start to question, well, if what's this stable coin backed by? And then you start to research, you know, fiat money. And then you start to realize like, oh, it's backed by nothing. Um, and then, then you start to question money. And then you're like, wait a second, I can own a stable coin or I can own Bitcoin and I can move them freely between the two. Um, that's when, you know, I think Bitcoin becomes more prevalent because it's just easier. The, the on-ramp becomes 10 times easier. Yeah. Uh, how, how do you think of the marketing of Lolly, the branding of Lolly, and, and why the name Lolly? Yeah, uh, we, we like to be, we, we're, you know, we like, we like to keep it fun. Um, Bitcoin, you know, to your point earlier, it's, uh, it's very confusing. Um, it's, it's difficult to get into. It's not really an inviting space. Um, and the, it, I kind of go back to my childhood, uh, you know, going, going back to like, you know, psychology, like, you know, think about a bank. Banks, banks are like not a really fun, welcoming place. But, you know, as a kid, the thing that I always looked forward to at the end was the lollipop. Okay. And, and so that got me, that got me in the bank. It sort of uh, taught, it made me look forward to going to the bank. And so if Bitcoin is the bank of the future. The, the thing that's missing is the lollipop. So um, yeah, we, we got lolly.com uh, early on uh, for really, really good, really good deal. And, uh, and yeah, built a whole brand around it. So uh, a lot of our like y- younger users really like it. Um, and I, and I think it's a, it's a good brand for really the, the, uh, you know, the type of voice that we want to have in the space and the ease that we were creating for, for most people. Yeah. How, how do you attract new users in your space? Is it, is it through branding on Twitter? Is it Facebook? Is it, um, I mean, it's probably not TV ads. Like how do you attract new users outside of Bitcoiners evangel- uh, evangelizing? Um, yeah, so you know, advertising on all the major networks, uh, we get to understand, you know, what people are clicking, um, who's clicking, um, you know, the, these ads, and, and start to see there. Uh, and then additionally, uh, you know, we we don't we don't collect or sell any any data, um, and so it's really it is tough. But we do a lot of surveys internally, and we reward our users for those surveys. So um, we get a good idea of like people that want to opt in and share, you know, who they are and and um, you know what age group they are. Um, that's how that's how we get to you know understand. So I, I'm a big believer in opt-in data um, versus like just sort of like you download this thing and it owns and sells all your data. Um, I'm, I'm a big believer that people should be in full control of their data. And there's a lot of Bitcoiners that don't want anybody knowing who they are. I don't want to know who they are. I just right. as long as they're shopping and like you know I don't care who they are. Yeah. You know? So uh, how do you guys handle privacy and security? Um, versus maybe other companies that are in this space or, or just how do you ta- how do you tackle that and what's what's your you know your company's position yeah our, our position is to it is to um, really capture as, as the minimal amount of data possible to run our business so we we most coupon and most most consumer sites don't actually need the data that the, that they're having and so you're starting to see this with like GDPR and um, and with like you know California compliance, um, privacy laws, and eventually it's going to be all across the U.S. That countries are actually starting to defend their populations um, because the, the tech companies you know don't are not protecting it. So we have to sort of um, be in this like in between where you know we need to understand you know a, so something about our users. We need to be able to communicate with our merchants to say like you know user one two three four five is shopping at Macy's, at Best Buy, at GameStop, but I don't care who user one, two, three, four, five is. I just care that that is a user that you know we have an email from, and I have no interest in selling that data. I have no interest in selling that email. I just want to be able to know that that user is shopping on this site. And so that's, that's the only thing we track. Um, and we don't track any other sites. Uh, it's just our merchant partners. And it's just saying that you shopped on that site, you bought something so that we can reward you. So if you bought something for hundred dollars, we can reward you for ten dollars in Bitcoin. That's all I want to know. Right. Where, where do you see um, Bitcoin in five or ten years? Um, I a lot further along and, and probably higher up than it is today. Um, I, I I just see it being you know having way more applications. I mean, you know, just even the last two years since we started Lolly, it's just the the amount of companies in the space, the amount of like you know, second layer technologies, consumer facing technologies like Lolly that are emerging. 
um, there's just gonna, I mean, it's just gonna, there's gonna be more, more users, more adoption. Where um, the thing that I try to like keep people, you know, that are the sort of the haters, it's like our total addressable market is like everyone with an internet connection. So if you look at all the pain points like I've seen over the years, it's like I'm not the only one. So you've got merchants that need it, you've got consumers that need it. Uh, you sort of had this like, um, you know, this perfect storm with COVID too of like all these technologies are going full, full internet, full full digital. So the the acceleration, like I I, I think the the what I probably would have said would have happened in ten to fifteen years is probably going to now happen in five to ten. Right. What what has it been like building? I mean, I think you started in the bear market, and, and yeah. now you know now you have the the COVID pandemic. Um, what have been some yeah. of you know the challenges you guys have had to tackle? You know, going through this period. Um, yeah, it's been. Um, it, it, I guess it, it's been it's been fun. The uh, challenging is probably a better word for it. But um, I would say like my team and I are a little bit masochistic and like where we, you know, I think we 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 enjoy the challenges probably too much. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been challenging to build a company in COVID. Uh, it, travel was you know huge category for us, and that was just wiped out overnight. Um, so you know, course correcting there. Um, I think you know, we're we're all like a bit you know on the on the leaning towards like preppers and um we we've i think we were very early it was like february when we were really sounding the alarms for covid and that was well before i think most of the world was so uh we we completely like ripped out our marketing campaigns and uh ripped out like a lot of our content that we were that we were running and really just made it like you know very covid friendly so making you know supporting uh merch merchants that were like around wellness fitness um, uh, grocery, um, all, and, and that, those businesses have just skyrocketed. So, you know, we were hitting a few categories, but we course corrected. So I think it was like, uh, like I say this thing to like first time founders, I was like, you know, everybody should build a company twice. If you're, if you're willing to start a company, you should always do it twice because the first time's really fucking hard. And the second time gets a lot easier. So the, the challenges that I like, you know, I tell friends that I'm going through and, and our investors and like, you know, um, you know, new friends that we're going through, um, you know, it's just another day. Uh, it's kind of like fun, fun, new, new challenges that come about that make it interesting, but it's, it's just another day. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're building with like this 10 year vision to, you know, 20 year vision really. Um, and so the day to day that, you know, the crazy stuff that comes about, it's not, it's not gonna, it's not gonna knock us, um, you know, off our course. Sure. Uh, you know, we don't really get into price too much. It's not a show about price or price predictions. But I'm curious, you know, uh, you know, if and when the next bill market comes, because your your company spans, you know, pre and post third halving. So now now we're going into 2021. How does the potential for a huge bill bull market affect maybe your internal projections at your company? Um, both, yeah. you know, from not just financially maybe and, and revenue, but just. I mean, I think it's like just as organic as marketing could get. Yeah, so we've never, you know, for the life of the company, we've never really had a true bull market. It's gone steadily from uh, when we launched, it was around 3,700 um, uh, for Bitcoin up to now a little over 10K. So it's been a, you know, I, I think perfect like run um, where it's been nice and slow. And, and so we've gotten to really build out the technology and we are at, you know, we're, we're launching our mobile app soon. So we're at this like kind of perfect spot where we're ready. We're ready for the bull, bull market. Uh, we operate like we're never going to have another bull market again uh, because it's tough to predict that uh, and when it's going to happen. But we're ready for it. And I, I, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm feeling like pretty bullish. We're you know, just starting to see all these like tides come in um, of like this need for Bitcoin. You have the, the Fed printing trillions of dollars. You've got an uh, inevitable recession coming. Uh, global recession. Um, and so, you know, what comes from that? Like, I, I think, you know, big, more and more people are going to be looking at, at, you know, what is, where do I keep my money during a, a global recession? Um, you know, the stock market's one option, gold's another option. Bitcoin is, in my opinion, one of the best options um, because it's money that you truly own. It's money that you can trade freely. It's money that nobody can take from you. So that that's where it gets really interesting. And then people are always going to have to buy things. So, we're not, you know, even during a recession, um, you know, some, you know, critics would say, you know, people are going to spend less, but people are actually going to try to save more during recession. So if you look at Rakuten and all these coupon companies, they do better during recessions. They're, rep they're recession proof because you have to buy the same stuff. 
you need groceries, you need, you need all the same things. Uh, people are always going to have like, you know, some disposable income, but you're going to want to, you know, actually be more concerned about how much you're saving. And so I think we're actually well suited to be at this like perfect, you know, there for like this perfect storm of all these things. People want to save money. People want to get into Bitcoin, uh, people searching for Bitcoin. Um, so yeah, we're, we're just trying to be ready when it, when it, when it hits. Awesome. Uh, I'm excited. When, when are we getting the app? The fully functional app? Um, before, uh, before the holidays. Awesome. Um, I, I yeah, think that's so, gonna... so keep follow us on Twitter. I do. I think that's going to be, uh, you know, a huge uh, improve, not improvement, just a huge uh, gateway drug for people. Um, I think so too. I, you know, apps are just what people are used to, and and I don't think people are used to using the desktop browser on their phone. Um, so, and most people doing the shopping on the phone. So, I can't wait for that. Um, I think it's just going to be lift off for you guys. So, uh, I, I'm super excited about Lolly. Um, it's one of the ways I really, you know, try to get the word out. Um, because it's a way to earn and get rewarded in Bitcoin and uh, spend the money you were normally going to make uh, or uh, not like normally going to spend on whatever you want. So I really appreciate that you've taken the time uh, to speak with us. This has been awesome. Is there anything else that, that we haven't covered that, that maybe you do want to cover? I don't, I don't want to be. No, no, we, co we covered a lot. I am down to talk about anything, but it's uh, you asked some great questions and like really tapped into a lot of the, the I think the coolest things about Lolly and, and you know, our path to, to get here. Yeah, where where can people? I mean, obviously, lolly dot com. Go go on Twitter. Anything else people should know so that they can use Lolly and and tell other people about Lolly. Yeah, I mean, we we have a really active Instagram. Uh, we're getting way more active on YouTube. Uh, Twitter is definitely our most active, and you know, follow us for the memes. Uh, stay for the Bitcoin education uh, and and the deals, of course. Um, and yeah, lolly dot com is great. I, I my DMs are always open. Um, if you know, if people ever want to reach out. Um, they can reach out to me directly. It's, you know, Alex Edelman. Um, and yeah, uh, we're, we're, uh, we're growing fast and, and we're hiring. So, you know, if, you know, smart people are looking to join a, a Bitcoin company. Um, you know, feel free to reach out. Yeah. There's over what, 500 retailers on the site. What, what are some of the most popular ones that people are using or, or the savviest Bitcoiners? Yeah. Uh, travel's huge for us. It's even during COVID. I think a lot of people don't, you know, are still traveling. Uh, so, you know, booking.com hotels.com is still, you know, really, really great for us. Um, and then, you know, Everlane is, is like a, you know, top one for like, you know, for fashion. Um, we've got, um, grocery with like Albertsons, uh, Vons, Safeway are really big. Um, and then, Groupon's like a huge one. A lot of people are, are, are you know, there's just like so many things you can get on Groupon. Um, so yeah, th those are some how, of our how biggest. How does that one work? So you you, you pre-buy Groupon spend? How, how would I use Groupon on Lolly? So uh, am I going to Groupon? Yeah. Oh, okay, I got it. So I'm going to Groupon.com through Lolly and then buying the thing on Groupon.com and getting the reward back. Yeah, so you okay. get rewards on top of your okay. savings. So I got it. It's like it's it, there's a similar mindset there where you you get both. So, um, but, uh, oh, and Chewy for Chewy is huge for, for anyone who has pets. Okay, I just got um, a puppy, and, so we went to Chewy okay. and I, I used Lolly and seven uh, percent back. Yeah, it's it was great. no joke. Um, and puppies are expensive. Yeah, it's gonna pay for the dog eventually. So exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. I gotta tweet that out. That's you good. know, so that that was the way to go. Um, but Groupon actually threw me for a loop because again, I I mean I, I I guess I'm a shopper, but um, I know I don't go to Groupon.com and, and look for things. So I was it was just yeah, it didn't didn't strike me. But that makes a lot of sense. Uh, but the Chewy thing worked out for us. Now we just I'm so happy to feed the dog. I, I can't wait to <laughs> spend the money on the dog food, you know, because uh, I'm getting the, the Bitcoin back. So uh, this right. has been awesome, Alex. I really appreciate it. Um, hope yeah, thanks for having me, James. Soon. Yeah. Everybody go out and uh, use lolly.com and get that Bitcoin. Alex Adelman spreading the word on how to earn and get rewarded in BTC right here on the Bitcoin Matrix podcast. And thank you for listening. If you dig the chats, vote with those thumbs and press five stars in that app. That's the best way to get the pot out so we can keep bringing you the freshest and dopest chats. This is said. Peace out.